Chapter 28 Woe to the crown pride of the drunkards of Ephraim, and to the fading flower of his glorious beauty, which is on the head of the fat valley of those who are overcome with wine. Behold, the Lord has a mighty and strong one, as a tempest of hail, a destroying storm, a tempest of mighty waters overflowing will he cast down to the earth with the hand. The crown of pride of the drunkards of Ephraim shall be trodden under foot, and the fading flower of his glorious beauty, which is on the head of the fat valley, shall be as the first ripe fig before the summer, which when he who looks on it sees, while it is yet in his hand he eats it up. In that day will the Lord of hosts become a crown of glory, and a diadem of beauty to the residue of his people, and a spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment, and strength to those who turn back the battle at the gate. Even these reel with wine, and stagger with strong drink. The priest and the prophet reel with strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They stagger with strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so that there is no place clean. Whom will he teach knowledge? And whom will he make to understand the message? Those who are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast? For it is precept on precept, precept on precept, line on line, line on line, here a little, there a little. No, but by men of strange lips and with another language will he speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest, give you rest to him who is weary, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Therefore shall the word of the Lord be to them precept on precept, line on line, here a little, there a little, that they may go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Why hear the word of the Lord, you scoffers, that rule this people that is in Jerusalem? Because you have said, We have made a covenant with death, and with the grave are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come to us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Therefore thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation. He who believes shall not be in haste. I will make justice the line, and righteousness the plummet, and the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the water shall overflow the hiding place. Your covenant with death shall be annulled, and your agreement with the grave shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then you shall be trodden down by it. As often as it passes through, it shall take you, for morning by morning shall it pass through, by day and by night, and it shall be nothing but terror to understand the message. For the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on it, and the covering narrower than that he can wrap himself in it. For the Lord will rise up as on Mount Perazim. He will be angry as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his strange work, and bring to pass his act, his strange act. Now therefore don't you be scoffers, lest your bonds be made strong. For a decree of destruction have I heard from the Lord of hosts on the whole earth. Give ear and hear my voice, listen and hear my speech. Does he who plows to sow plow continually? Does he continually open and harrow his ground? When he has leveled the surface of it, doesn't he cast abroad the dill, and scatter the cumin, and put in the wheat in rows, and the barley in the appointed place, and the spelt in its borders? For his God does instruct him aright, and does teach him. For the dill are not threshed with a sharp threshing instrument, neither is a cartwheel turned about on the cumin. But the dill are beaten out with a staff, and the cumin with a rod. Bread grain is ground, for he will not always be threshing it. And though the will of his cart and his horses scatter it, he does not grind it. This also comes forth from the Lord of hosts, who is wonderful in counsel and excellent in wisdom.